I'll put it on the next day. So, so the idea was that we would record some of our silly discussions uh, around the con. You, you know, this is this is a subsegment of the group that makes it all happen, right? This is the committee, and uh, you know, there's other other people, Jeff and and Chris and Roberto, and uh, I'm sure others that I can't even think of. But but a lot of people put in a lot of work, and and part but part of the fun of the convention last November was us just sitting in the admin room just chatting and it, it right. is great right the fellowship amongst this group is awesome so i thought what a great chance to do it and record it and give people an idea of what's coming in the convention if i can get this published quickly so this is um, almost exactly the the, uh, the people who are in a tech support room so this is what you <laughs> missed out by not having a text problem at the, at the last con that's right yep. that's right that's right that's and and uh, yeah, and by by Edgar setting setting everything up. So, you know, we've got five people here. Of course, me, and uh, we're arguing whether I'm the face of this or Pratik should be the face because he's prettier than I am. But <laughs> well, we might put that up to vote. Oh, uh, yeah. um, so so we got me. We've got uh, Pat Wells, who's been associated with the con for ever since day one. I started the face to face con. Pat was my partner in crime the whole way, and uh, is a is an anchor in, in this whole thing. Um, we've got uh, Bobby's with us and uh, Bobby has joined the con for the November convention and has been um, just, a, just a beast in getting information out and getting us organized and, and you know, kind of reaching a new level of professionalism. So uh, just pumped to have Bobby involved in this. And then of course, Edgar, who um, is the brains of the technical side and really the brains of everything else. So uh, Edgar's given us the confidence to do this on Discord, to grow it, to execute on tabletop uh, events. I keep wanting to say tabletop simulator, but tabletop events. Um, and and so, you know, Edgar's a, a huge part in that. And then Pratik and Pratik and Jeff have been working with the, um, with the vendors and uh, trying to increase the vendor engagement We'll talk more about that in a minute, but um, you know we have some ideas for what we want to do, and then of course we have to do something that's good for the vendors. So that's a that's an interesting uh, discussion in in my mind. But um, you know we 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 sit here on Sunday, and I hate to mention days on recordings or podcasts because it always takes me too long to get them out, and it seems like it was ancient times. But Just don't tell them which Sunday. Don't tell them it's still March. <laughs> that's right. On a <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. yeah. This Sunday in March. Um, so here yeah. we are on Sunday. We open ticket sales Saturday, and inside 24 hours, sold over a thousand tickets. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's really it's really quite amazing. So <laughs> that definition, we've got a couple of things going on, right? We've got registrations, which are people signed up, and uh, today we've got two thirds of the registrations done. Right? We have three, we have 300 slots. We have over 200 registered at this point. And then um, the, the tickets are for seats at events. Uh, and we've, we've got a bunch of those. You know, each, each event has 50 seats and we've, we've sold a thousand of those uh, seats, which is quite extraordinary. Um, so I'm pretty excited about uh, the quantity of participation, but really all that's driven by the fact that we've just got so many great designers. Uh, here at the con doing their own thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from from uh, Mark Herman to uh, to Volko Runka to um, David Thompson to Bobby, finish the list. I, I can't even. It's run. interesting. It's, it, it's, it's the Oscars. It's just, it's amazing. It's so much uh, more entertaining though. Completely, completely. And um, we're just, just super lucky, super lucky. It's a, it's a, it's a combination of um, you know, soft touch the Herald rings, right? You've got a lot of friends in the, in the industry and in the hobby. And just bringing that together and all these super interesting people, you know, just even besides their game design, they're, they all bring such amazing content just to the yeah. conversational table. It's a yeah, thrill to be around them. It's awesome. Yeah, and a, a lot it. of... A lot of games that have been around for a while, and then a bunch of new games uh, that mm -hmm. are that are showing up. I just got off uh, off the phone yesterday with Mark Miklos, and uh, he's got the um, he's got the new game. What is it? It's not Rhode Island. What is it? Uh, 
Uh, right. If you'll look it up while I while I yeah. distract everyone, we'll absolutely uh, we'll make this appear seamless. But Mark <laughs> had, and and he uh, and Mark, of course, Mark's wonderful, and and I might even cut and paste a recording uh, I did with him as I was talking to him uh, in, in this recording. But you know, Mark is one of those. One of those great, he's an excellent designer. These games are great, very playable and wonderfully reflective of the period. And he's a pro and he's done this, you know, this is number 10, I think. Yeah, it is. And Battle what, of the White Plains. White Plains. And uh, so I'm talking to Mark and he's the best, uh, you know, he's just the best. He's a good human being. He's nice. He's he's humble. Uh, and, and and we were having this discussion. And when you talk to Mark, it's like he was at the battle. And uh, so oh, yeah. he was telling me the stories of how they put the the the, uh, the map together. He found a, a local who was also a fan of his series, and he said that every weekend that local would go to a different point on the battlefield with his family and take a bunch of pictures and send them to him. That's the best way to check line of sight is physically out there. <laughs> yes. That's yes. right. Can Fine. you actually shoot your you know your your wife, daughter, son? Right. From the fun we have definitive answers for those slopes <laughs> with a camera, of course. Yes, yeah. yes, cross, yes. Crosshairs on the lenses. That's what I meant. Camera, of course. You guys <laughs> taking it the wrong way. But uh, yeah, he was he was delightful. So he's gonna he's got a session coming up as well for this White Plains game that you know he doesn't have a production map. It's a it's a play test map, and he's gonna do some show and tell. So very cool. Hopeful, hopeful to get that there. Um, David Thompson is uh, showing his new. Uh, his new version of uh, Undaunted. What is it? Reinforcements, Reinforcements. Reinforcements. which is a great add-on for both of the previous Undaunted modules, and that's oh. a solo platform. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Dan Dan uh, uh, Dan Bullock is showing his um, Iranian game, I think. And I don't has that been yes. delivered yet? The 1979 game? Yeah. No, it's yeah. still on Kickstarter. It Kickstarter closes today or tomorrow. Good. Uh, you know, which unfortunately is going to place this podcast in a specific point in time. But <laughs> <laughs> theoretically, right. Um, as as a riff of that, I don't think he'll be demoing 1979 Revolution in Iran at SDS on this year. But he is bringing along um, with his co-designers, uh, one of them on our team, Chris Bennett. He's bringing in the shadows. Oh, right. Yeah, new new with GMT. Uh, Another subject, uh, um, it's one of the events I'm really looking forward to. Uh, French resistance, you know, latter part of the Second World War, uh, looks to be really good. And mm -hmm. those, those three heads together, uh, Joe Dewhurst, um, Dan Bullock, uh, everyone else, I mean, it's a great combo to produce a cool game. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be great. And then the old standbys, right? We got Volko's doing Almoravid, I believe, right? No, 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 he's doing man in show business. Yeah, he's he's doing Nevsky, right? Yeah, yeah Nevsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's and he's he's doing kind of an interesting thing. He's going to set up three days of Nevsky and play a campaign that theoretically could go all three days, two or three hours a day. I, I can't remember exactly what his time slots are, but the idea, his idea, is that he's going to break the group that shows up into two different uh, different uh, teams. Oh yes, the team will collaborate and negotiate what they want to do. Those, those are always a lot of fun. And that's a great way to use the technology, too. Once you try to put 20 people into a room like that, it gets a little difficult, but <laughs> right. Discord will set up. It's, it's a lot of fun. Right. So that'll be cool. And, and um, you know, he says he doesn't mind if people come for one day or two or whatever, right? You can just pop in, change teams, do whatever you like. Yep. And then that way he's going to keep everybody else involved. And, and some of these events, um, you know, there, people will show up and the GM will ask if there's anybody that wants to play. So maybe there'll be two or three, two or four people play a game and, um, and the uh, designer will GM that, right? And then everybody else can watch. But, you know, it, it, that's one of the cool things about this, can, this online convention that I, we just don't talk about enough. And that is that you can step into a game and and watch it. And by the way, you're on the front row, right? You get your 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 the designers there. You can hear them clearly. Uh, you can see the map. They're sharing a map of some kind um, through Discord. And then five minutes later, you can go to another session, and uh, and and drop in. And it's not a nuisance. You're on the front right. row again, and, uh, and you can you know as much as you want to see. We have so many great designers that are 
conflicting with one another mm -hmm. and that um, that it really is a great opportunity to to pop around now the warning I'll, I'll give is is was the one I learned my own on my own list I would sit in with you guys and chat in the um, in the admin room and then I would pop into somebody else's room and then I would I, which, and I didn't have my mute on, right? So my mute's off and I've got this loud mechanical keyboard and I just start pounding on oh, it. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, you know, probably three times during the weekend alone, Volko said, Harold, would you please mute? Yeah. It's it's worth, there's a few things to learn, but. It's worth mentioning that uh, Discord, the software it uses is completely free and you can just do it through the browser. You don't need to install anything. So you can participate in the convention just by clicking a URL and there it is. It's on your browser. You're watching the video, you're hearing the people, you don't need to do anything else. So this is, if you want to dig a little deeper into it, that's always an option. But if you just want to participate, it's really low barrier to entry. Clicking a link is all you gotta do. And before so the last con, and we'll do it again before this one, uh, we brought a lot of people up to speed on Discord, Vassal, um, TTS. Yes, yes. I think Volko is probably a great teacher of Vassal, frankly. Yes. And then the, the war game, Bootcamp guys are hardworking yeah. as well. Second hardworking people in the show business. Exactly. So there's plenty of opportunities to get over the, the electronic hump in terms of, of learning the technology. Absolutely. So you can enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I like the idea that um, you brought up about, you know, moving from room to room. I mean, it builds upon the model that we all wanted from the get go to emulate the, the physical convention atmosphere and the ability to, you know, Nobody can see the air quotes I'm making, right? but but walk around, you know, explore different rooms. Yeah. And, um, you know, never be put off due to, you know, being shy or anything. I mean, you're in the comfort of your own home uh, or your office and you pop in and you can listen in and you can participate. You know, In one case, in the comfort of the, your own closet as uh, yeah. one person. That's right. <laughs> if I remember correctly, they were banished by their family friend, for the being too loud. Lavalov, that's right. <laughs> And uh, he was uh, joining us from his uh, coat closet and it's, it's had, it. having a great time. He had a great time. So that's always well, an option for you. Still a front row seat. Still a front row seat. Still exactly. front row. Yeah. Yes. Loved it. That's funny. That's probably, it. was it, was that a European uh, participant that was keeping everybody awake or no? I don't remember. You mean no. with the coats? With the coats? With the, yeah. with the coats. No, that was Darren Leveloff, the designer of uh, Soviet Dawn <laughs> and Alba State of Siege. <laughs> And he's, yeah. he's redoing his house, right? So yeah. he's yeah. living in a in a small yeah. unit outside, and just um, it, he was basically in a large, large walk-in closet. I thought he was selling his coats. <laughs> I wasn't sure. So there was a lot of good stuff there. Wow. Such a deal, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. It was great. That's good. That's good. Just one of many, many. We we all had cool stories at the last con. Bobby, you did something that was kind of unique at the last convention. As a matter of fact, you did really some, Zoom, you did some Zoom bombing, as I recall. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's hard to recall. Yeah, that is such an excellent story because I don't think the, the real story has ever been told. I think Dan, maybe to this day, um, and and for for listeners who might not have been at the con or at the event, um, and not a lot of people noticed it, but but we riffed on it a lot in social media after. But but Dan Pancaldi of No Enemies Here fame, the uh, weekly war game um, YouTube cast, right? Um, he ran as was Morgane and Guillaume Reti, right? Um, just, you know, talking about hubris and, and some other uh, working and stuff. And he had a channel and he left generally a lot of our uh, hosts if they were, you know, running a YouTube live stream or, or their next channel. But instead of leaving the link to the YouTube stream where you could participate in live chat, um, he left the back door to it using StreamYard. Right. So basically he left the backstage open and it was just brief. Right. But I deleted the link, but, but not before I had, I had clicked on it and I was going through lots of things very quickly, <laughs> clicked on it, ended up backstage. <laughs> very surprised. And Keep going, Dan. Yeah. And then couldn't extricate myself fast enough. And even when I did, I left a ghost and I was just floating in there with Morgan and Dan, like, what is this? It was, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen because 
First of all, you clicked on it, and I don't think you really realized you were Zoom. No, no, either. I didn't. I mean, you I thought didn't. you were jumping into one of my Zoom sessions, right? Where yes. you, so so where everybody sits together, right? And and yes. and so it's Dan and it's Morgan and it's you and hey. and yeah. <laughs> and Dan, of course, had no idea why you were in the middle of it. He was confused. <laughs> you were confused, and uh, it was really it was good for a laugh. I still don't think Dan knows what happened. I don't, I, think, I don't he, think he did either. And and after we we added fuel to the fire by saying that that it was a uh, it was planned. It was yeah. planned. we yeah. had we had hacked into his system and yes. found the back door. And beware, yeah. beware, there's more coming. Yeah, we're and we're watching you in your own home. The best part it was Dan, and Dan knew how to roll with it too. Yeah, no, it was all pro. It was very funny. Yes. And Dan, I, you know, I think Dan's even going to do something, right? Dan's going to do a, uh, uh, a kind of a, maybe even an opening ceremony. I don't know if it's a ceremony, but oh. an event where he's gathering, he's gathering a handful of Canadian designers uh, to do. They all speak the same language as yeah. Dan. So uh, that's right. They all uh, speak Canadian. They speak Canadian. Yeah. Also, I wonder what the Canadian Canada. uniform will be this year. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Exactly. I think that's going to be an awesome panel. That's sort of our opening event, right? Occurring not on the first day of the con, but the evening before. Yes. And, and so who are the sit? Who are the who are the Canadian designers? Of course, Morgan uh -huh. is going to be there. Um, Brian Train. Brian Train. Um, uh, I guess not Carl Paradis anymore. We were no, we were but the Carl gentleman Payton. who did uh, bayonets and tomahawks. Yeah, Mark Rodriguez. Yes. Yeah, and it seems to me like there's one more that Marco Poutre, right? Yes, yes. Oh, that's Bain, that's in Tomahans. I'm sorry, right? But yeah, no, that is Marco. And uh, yeah, so anyway, that that that's going to be an interesting uh, thing, and it's it keeps Dan busy, right? I mean, that's really out of trouble for us. So we don't <laughs> want him to hurt anyone, um, and if he's going to hurt somebody, we want it to be the Canadians. Uh, so. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Absolutely. So, is, it Robert, we, is it Robert Dulesky? Is Robert Dulesky? Yes. Yes. I think he's there too. Yeah. Yeah. So we love the Canadians. We don't want anybody hurt, and uh, and so that's that's good. Um, other interesting panels, right? Uh, let's see. Scott Mansfield is going to do um, a graphics panel, and uh, some interesting uh, some interesting names there, which I'm not going to remember, Bobby. So I hope you're referring back to all of these. But the teaching session was a big hit last time. Yeah, that was yeah. great. And I think he's going to do fantastic. another one of those, right? Where he teaches you how to take pictures of games. He's been kind of doing a lot of the stuff for GMT games where he's kind of their, to some degree, uh, their go to photographer. He takes absolutely amazing photos, uh, photos of components, of the, you know, the box arts, of the games in play that really kind of tell a story. When you see his photos, you're not just looking at the bits and bobbles, you actually see, you're kind of experiencing the game through visually. And he does an incredible job of capturing that. He really talks about that specifically how to yeah. tell a narrative in his photos in that talk and I highly recommend that one. Yeah. And he, he highly drives home too. He had a, he had a good riff on um, about composition, you know, and composition mm -hmm. being, you know, yeah. really, really the important factor and, and a lot of the technique, you know, just adds to it. But, yeah. but with the artist panel, uh, that'll be really interesting. That's um, Richard Shaco of, uh, you know, uh, Friedrich, right? And Maria Fain. Yes, yes. Um, Mark Rodrigue, again, if I'm making the parent, and Jerry White. Um, a designer and artist, right? And uh, Terry Leeds, of course. Yeah, who did uh, the art on on this? Liberty or Death, probably one of the yeah. finest maps, and in, in you know. Oh, the greatest, Bobby. Not probably. <laughs> <You're probably laughs> silly. Just trying to be fair to other Don't people. Be no, no, we're not. We're not here to be fair. <laughs> I would have meant though. Terry's stuff is awesome. Yeah, so, Terry. So, so. Terry's Terry's great. He's also doing the art on uh, Flashpoint South China Sea. Okay, right. and he is. He is now working for GMT. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Idea. Yeah, it's great. They're keeping him busy. He did Tank Duel. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's got his hands full. But uh, yeah. and I think yeah. Mike Bardicelli is going to be there. Speaking of Tank Duel, I think I saw his badge uh, recently go by. Right. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll right. level check, make sure. Yeah. He's got the Desert <laughs> expansion that's coming out. Yes. Yes. What events are his... Everybody looking forward to learning personal events. I mean, we'll have time, you know, to enjoy the con too. Anything that stands out to any of you? Well, we'll have a number of vendors represented and they're having events of their own. That's true. Um, so Blue Panther, they were there at the last con. Um, really nice 
uh, presentation about how they run their business. Um, and if you're at the con, potentially some discount opportunities. Yeah. Um, Lock and Load will be there again. Um, they're going to be demoing um, their uh, very popular Lock and Load tactical series, as well as the mm -hmm. World at War 85. Um, so there's multiple sessions of that. Um, so it's if you want to play, great you wanna learn, um, this is the, this is the uh, time and place to do that. Academy will be there. Um, Aegir will be there. Um, new one, Revolution. Um, mm -hmm. They'll be there um, demoing their new game that's, that's out very recently, Deadly Woods. Um, and um, many of these companies will be giving um, little talks about sort of, it's, it's really up to them what they want to talk about, sort of the state of the company, um, what they're working on, what, what the future brings or holds for them. Um, demos, um, potentially meeting some of their designers. Um, and then, you know, we've encouraged a lot of these vendors just to hang out in on the chat and um, make themselves available. If you want to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, um, just drop by. So just a chance to interact with vendors that, you know, probably most, most of us really only interact via the website and, you know, buying and selling. So um, this, I think, is a great opportunity, both events as well as interactions. And it's a little bit different from, from last year, right? I mean, in many ways, right, we have the ambassadors of, of many game companies, right? right. Show up and, and, you know, they, they, they demo their games, they, 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 they pitch, uh, you know, products may be in the pipeline. But, but what you're talking about, critique is, is, you know, having um, like a vendor room yeah. where there's, you know, again, as if you're just stopping by their offices. Um, and that's just something new for us. And it's cool. But again, it, it sort of emulates the physical con, right? Like, you know, you go over to the Revolution Games table or over to the uh, GMT table. And uh, you might meet some some individuals that work there, so it's it's really kind of nice. Yeah, so GMT's been a supporter of the con, right, Harold and 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 Pat, uh, mm -hmm. since the very beginning. So there'll be a significant presence, and as we've already mentioned, a number of the designers of of GMT games will be uh, demoing a number of of their uh, titles. Saturday night we have an event, six p.m. Uh, and it's a couple of hours, starting with Gene Billingsley laying out the state of the state of the state for GMT. So it's something, it's a, it's a speech he usually gives at his local con convention, right? Warehouse. The yep. warehouse, the warehouse which, yeah. which many of us go to and, and uh, is not to be missed. Uh, but of course, given the pandemic, it's been hard for us to do that. So, so Gene is doing that. And, and then of course, we're gonna have other GMT luminaries, uh, people with games. And um, John Butterfield is going to announce a game that he is working on. Uh, that has some uh, some some attachment to many of our hearts. Uh, and it's related to Chad uh, Jensen and the game that he didn't complete. So um, oh, that's that, interesting. Oh wow! More, more to follow on that, but that's uh, hmm. that's going to come out at that particular event with uh, John Butterfield and Kai talking about that. Wow! Well, yeah, it's a big uh, reveal. Yeah. So we got. I don't know what it is. Incidentally, so I'm, I'm not thinking this. I have no I, idea. I don't either. I mean, I, I don't think any of us do. And that, yeah. that's just so yeah, I don't think any of you for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, and I I'm I'm too excited to ask. I just think it's cool and, and, and know know little about what Chad was working on behind the scenes. So um, that's pretty exciting and pretty cool, and and will be fun. And you know, getting a couple hours of GMT talking about how they view the markets. I mean, it's a rare rare opportunity, and uh, I think people will will, will really like that. Um, let's see, what else do we have? You know, the other thing about Blue Panther to think about is, is Blue Panther is, is the face for a number of other companies. So um, Blue Panther covers all the Hollenspiel games and produces those. So those will, will be at the, uh, you know, well, he'll be talking about those. I don't, I, I can't speak for whether or not they'll be discounted. That's up to him. Um, but, you know, he brings the physical Hollenspiel games for sale at the at the San Diego Con, yep. which is a great opportunity. Yep. And then um, what, what, who else? The uh, White Dog, oh, White okay. Dog games, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's also adding some under his own label. So, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of cool games come through his hands, uh, and that'll be fun. Um, Uwe Eichert from Academy has discussed. You know, I don't know if he has the time. I know he's just swamped with the recent success wonderful success of his uh, Kickstarter. But um, 
if he is able to, we expect to get a state of the business address from him. And, and, and we had a great discussion with him about a week ago about, um, you know, the costs, right? That we, we've, we've, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to go into economics too much, but, you know, we're, we're introducing a lot of capital trying to get an economy moving and and all of that activity is inflationary. And I'm not saying that that's bad. It just is. It's how economics work. I but believe there's three means, rules, Harold, that we're not supposed to talk about. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, I'll, I'll shut up. But the end result is that, you know, the game companies now are dealing with um, increasing uh, paper prices. Yeah, which affect sure. the price of games. And imagine if you did a Kickstarter or a P500 at a given price, and then you print it two years later, uh, after locking in the price with your customers, and then, you know, your game company has to eat it. So they're trying to figure yeah. out how to deal with that. And we talked to Uwe Eichert a good deal about that. It'll be interesting to hear his, his perspective. Um, so, yeah, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff. I've got a lot. Just, I mean, browsing through our schedule of events is just, it's nuts. I mean, it's just, it's a dream catalog. Um, I just, I, I literally, you know, I'm browsing it all the time, right? It's just, you know, um, some doing some things on social media, et cetera. So I'm always looking at them and it's just, it's always a bit of a marvel, but there's a lot of events that, I mean, that, that resonated with uh, people last time, like the morning coffee sessions, yes, yeah. after hour sessions, and not just feedback from attendees, but a lot of the designers and, and luminaries as well. They really just enjoyed sitting around kibitzing about wargaming history there are all sorts of topics covered and it was just this really nice kind of fireside thing in the evening um and i love the morning just seeing all the different faces uh listening to harold and and mo from mo's game table um sort of our mc for a lot of the convention he's amazing um, i just i really enjoy those moments so those are cool they, they get you started and they wrap up your day uh, you know um, it's a great point, Bobby. Mo's involvement, uh, he's just, he's fantastic and very, very good with, uh, with our crew. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the way that Mo works with us is Thursday night before the convention. Uh, Mo and I are going to sit down at, uh, I think, again, 6 p.m. in the evening and talk about what's coming at the con. We might even have a few um, superstars, uh, designers drop in. Um, and... Uh, so that will be, you know, kind of the kickoff with Mo. And then Mo's going to do something every evening that will be a wrap up of the convention. And then at the, con and, and those things will be widely available. You don't have to be in the con to get onto Mo's live feed. Um, and the cool thing uh, is after that's over, as Bobby was saying, we have a happy hour. So we, we gather in a room. What, what's the name of the room this year, Bobby? You even mentioned it. The after hours room. After hours room. Yeah, the after hours room. Very yeah, logical. I like it. That's catchy, yeah. So, yeah, um, we thought about the lounge. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, let's, sure. let's see if this works, Bobby. If people can find it, we're in good shape. That's right. <laughs> the beauty of having an after hours too is it rises to the top in the channels too. Yeah. And you have the little the little single quotes, so yeah. it stays right up at the top. So we're That's hoping right. people hang we, out. Yeah. Um, last year we cornered Uwe Eichert on Saturday night, and I think <laughs> it was midnight his time. Yeah. Wow. And uh, we, he, was, he was spent, but it was in his den of some kind. And it was the most interesting group of, of statues and mementos around there. <laughs> he lives and in I, the Masterpiece Theater set if you, for people who have not <laughs> seen this. That's exactly it. It's incredible. Yes. And he was drinking a rare German aperitif of some sort or digestif of some sort. It was just absolutely was an amazing experience. And yeah, he, said, he said he did that every night. It was great. And, yeah. and uh, I believe it. I hundred percent believe it. Yeah, there's no question. No, he's he's legit, man. When he says it, it's he means it. It's from his heart. He's and there was a bust of a of a Roman emperor, um, but we could yeah. stop saying it was the patron saint of war gaming, Abe Vigoda. Yeah, that sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Abe Vigoda. I know it was. Yeah. yeah. And there was a very convoluted story of how he's related to the, pe the people in the busts. So I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, right. that, was, that was an entire path of descent. So epic. It was so good. It was so good. I love Uwe because when he, you know, it, we, you get exactly what he is and what, he's, what he feels. There's no, you know, there's no, he's not trying to show off or trick you or convince you any other way. He just lays it out there. He Pure is, energy. Uh, that guy's pure energy. Yeah, he's great. He's great. I, you know, I saw him at Gen Con, not last summer, of course, but the summer before, uh, and he walked through a game, and it was unbelievable. It's like the 
six the sixth day of Gen Con. <laughs> and and he's taking me through a new game with the energy of a 12 year old that yeah, uh, sure. was just so excited and interested. And uh, he is, you know, he is the, he's number one as far as the uh, hardest working man in, in the business. Definitely. But, uh, really? but the eight, yeah. So we got eight o'clock. We've got the morning, the mornings, uh, you know, coffees and uh, you know, we've got some designers that are going to drop in and talk, but it's just a chance for all of us to talk. And that's what we end up with. Right? We end up, with some stupid controversial this question that I ask that ever makes everybody mad, half the people mad, and the other half are happy, and then we just argue with each other. But we can talk Next about day everything. We switch sides. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. switch. Yeah, I'm setting them up. For, I'm just setting them up for Volko's game. That's all I'm doing. Um, but uh, you know, the the games start at nine, so people start filtering out at the end of that, and then I'm going to do a bunch of. Uh, Harold on games interviews, man. And I, you know, some of them are, are going to be epic. You man. Know, Dean Essig, I've got Dean Essig for the first time. That's pretty exciting. He doesn't That's talk very, very much. And I've, you know, I've asked, uh, begged, uh, pleaded uh, to get him on for, for, uh, for years. So that's exciting uh, to get an MMP presence. And we actually have somebody's doing an ASL and uh, demo and, and, um, I think Scott uh, is going to do the, the ASL demo and then somebody else is going to do um, Ardwolf. It's going to do a, uh, um, let's see, what is it? OCS. OCS boot camp. Yeah. Yeah. Boot camp. So, uh, so, you know, MMP is, is growing in, uh, in footprint here and uh, that's, we're all happy about that. That's great. Um, I, I love, I, as, as much as it, is it sometimes doesn't seem I love a good hex encounter war game and MMP certainly puts out a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, but we got Mark McLaughlin, uh, Ted Racer, I got wow. a few him. And, uh, you know, people don't have to come to the convention to see those things. Uh, I'll be recording them and, and, and posting them later, but um, it's going to be fun. Interesting to, interesting to talk to those guys in, in that forum. Well, I'd like really to highlight that. I mean, you got you got six Harold on Games interviews, uh, including a couple with both Jason Matthews and Amanda Gupta of Imperial Struggle, Twilight Struggle, 1960 fame. But um, the other four individuals, right? Mark McLaughlin, Ted Racer, Dean Essig, and Ed Beach. Yeah. I mean, these are all individuals that are just, you know, saints. You know, right, right. They reach canonization levels in wargaming, but they have not made many public appearances. Mm -hmm. these, True. I mean, I should I shouldn't say this, but I really considered these four interviews, you know, coups of a sort, yeah. um, because they're all very very important designers and very interesting people, and they rarely make appearances. So um, those are those are all events I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to listening at. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, go ahead, Pat. Sorry. The second the interesting thing about the dynamic of this of a virtual convention is it enables access greater access for those designers that do not want to uh, venture out of their, uh, their home territory. They can still participate. They can be heard. We can, we can enjoy what they have to say and their insight into the gaming world from the comfort of their home. Mm -hmm. and so it's, I think it's, it's a weird beneficial side effect yeah. of having to go virtual. Yeah, well said. No, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, that was a real realization for me because the first time we, we did this last fall, it was sort of as a substitute, right, for the, mm -hmm. the in-person San Diego mm -hmm. ISCON. Um, but it quickly became apparent that it, it was a, a substitute, but it all, also was a, a lot else in terms of the ability for people who attended to go to a lot of different games, see a lot of different things, um, have access to a lot of different designers, companies, right. uh, more than you'd have at an at a in-person convention. Um, plus, we had a number of people who never went to in-person conventions because the travel and the time was just not, yeah. um, you know, possible for them. And so, you know, this was this was the convention. And so I think, yeah, Pat, you're absolutely right. I think um, this offers a lot of opportunities that would never be available um, in an in-person convention. That's some of the best feedback we had, yeah. Didn't we also have a couple of people feedback that they didn't go to physical conventions yeah, exactly. because they they don't like large gatherings, or, but they're able yeah. to attend ours. 
and 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 see a lot more things than their their comfort level will allow. Right. Yeah. Those. Yes. Yeah, there was that feedback. We had people who just live too far away and just cannot, you know, afford to travel to San Diego mm-hmm. because you know if you were coming from Italy or something like that. That's a very long ways to go. But there's at this point the only thing you have to do is wake up at a slightly weird time for uh, for three days and yeah. you're there. It's true. Yeah. It's our international footprint was definitely increased by the right. the virtual nature of virtual. I was very happy to see the Europeans uh, scheduling games in their own time zones and just kind of setting up their own events that kind of ha- were happening and, you know, what I would consider 2 a.m., you know. And, yeah, the lights never go out, right? Exactly. So it's... <laughs> yeah, we it's don't be- have to lock the doors. It's becoming... We're becoming... Uh, more and more time zones are sort of falling uh, to our uh, grasp here. So pretty, hopefully it's going to be a 24-hour con at some point. So do you guys think there's a future in this online con stuff? I do actually. So. Oh yeah. It, this okay. is a it's very very big money question right now. Uh, I'm you know coming from the tech world where cons usually cost four thousand five thousand dollars to attend and uh, are only in you know, the destination cities. And because of last year, they've been kind of moving much more to virtual ones. And I don't. A lot of people don't want to go back. A lot of people are saying, "Why was I paying that much money to go hang out in a crappy hotel?" You know. Yeah. So um, I think there's a very, there's a huge niche that a lot of people are going to be very open to. I hope that cons like this and uh, Jones being all cons will have virtual options going uh, going forward. Yeah, and I can envision even a lot of. I mean, we all know people who have their own little home con, right? Mm. Like, you oh, know, yeah. right? Like we could have Pratik con or or Edgar con or Pat con, right? And you know, <laughs> we all head over to the house and maybe he invites you know eight or ten people or whatever. Um, but I can see people doing that and even like even having like a guest appearance by the designer of the game that they might be playing. You know, it's just it, there's so much possibility because it doesn't require an enormous amount of effort in terms of physical space, right? And organizing that. Um, you know, we've learned that you can put together a a fairly a, a fairly strong convention atmosphere given enough time. But given a week, you can put something very, very quickly together and use like something like Discord as your digital platform and instantaneously be sharing. It is really kind of worth mentioning that at a real con, you have to, you're there. It's, you're it's a very, very good method. Ooh. Sorry, that, that had a little visual, uh, audiovisual glitch there for a second. I was going to say is that at a real con, you're kind of committed. You're, you're yes. there physically. You cannot leave to because the phone you know, rang and you have to step away from the game. You can't yeah. take a couple of hours off to do something. And this one, you can. You can literally drop in any time where you have time or where you have your, your stuff scheduled and then go back to whatever else you need to get done. In between yes. last one and this one, Discord's actually increased their um, capabilities too, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And yes, uh, we're very grateful for the fact that Discord provides the, uh, the service and the bandwidth uh, for us and for other cons uh, sim- that are kind of using similar technologies. So uh, we're very, yeah, this has been a great technology for us. Yeah. Well, what's changed, Edgar, from, you know, the uh, Discord limitations on, on video participants to now? Uh, not to go too, too deep in the weeds, it's just more people in the room. So we have we can have a lot more people than we did uh, in this, in, excuse me, in the fall for spring now this time. So uh, it's 50 people now with cameras on and screen sharing. Yeah. Which is frankly an amazing technology, just, you know, without going, uh, it, you know, how excited I am by this. It's an incredibly difficult task. They're ama- doing amazingly well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, just the perfect, um, you know, the perfect storm of capability and, and then the rest of us being stuck and not being able to do these face-to-face cons. Exactly. The other thing that's interesting about these cons that we don't talk about very often, but I thought I'd at least say something about, and that is that, um, that, that the uh, convention really costs very little, right? I mean, almost, almost nothing. And, uh, and so what we do for these conventions is we give the money to charity. Right. Um, you know, we could we could certainly give the we just use it as a chance to uh, to, to use uh, and communicate some gratitude. And and so we select three charities as a group and uh, the money goes to those three charities. And I think that's a that's a nice, admirable way to do this. The, the, the face to face convention is a different animal. You know, it, 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 we've spent anywhere from five to eight thousand bucks to put on a face to face convention with the rent and the, and the guarantees on food and all these other painful things that we have to go through. So, 
this is a, just a very unique opportunity for us to do, uh, to have the convention, have some fun, and then also do some, do some good, good works. So uh, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to mention that, and that's certainly what we're doing. We don't talk about it a lot, but that's what's happening around these, these uh, conventions. Yeah, and I can't, we can't speak for other conventions, but I think, you know, things like Armchair Dragoons, et cetera, and you know, we've benefited greatly from, from all the work that Brand puts in. He's, he's another person of, of a like mind that, you know, we just want to do some good work. Um, that's just, that's basically it. Yeah. I think, you know, as sort of a, a newcomer to, to an, an amazing team, right? Um, a family, really. Uh, it's, it's really nice. It's, you know, the one thing we we're always talking about is just doing good. You know, we, we talk about a, a lot about, you know, little technical aspects and some of the strategies we have to, to, you know, get people to go. But at the back of all of our minds, we're always mentioning about just making this a good experience and a, a decent one and, and, you know, bringing a little, bringing a little humanity while we can, especially in the last mm -hmm. year. So I, just, yeah. I, like I like that, that even just the war gaming hobby in general, but, but especially this team, you know, definitely united behind that concept. It's, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the team in a minute and try not to, to tear up, but, you know, the um, the goal of this convention two years ago, and Pratik, you were, you and Tim Charlesworth really were the two that were pushing it early on. And and as I recall, the goal wasn't to put on a big convention and get a bunch of people in and or raise money or do anything else. It was you know, there are a bunch of people that don't know how to use these tools that we're all working with now in this pandemic. And if there's any way that we can get people more comfortable with Discord, with Vassal, with Tabletop Simulator, uh, then we should do it. And, and uh, okay. you know, with those original goals, we did, you know, I, I'm very pleased uh, with, with the number of people that we know, right, that we converted to, to these forums. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we only had one technical error uh, of all the participants, and I think that was because of not uh, understanding the technology, just the age of the equipment that he was forced to deal with. We had a bit of internet connection problem, but you're right. You're right, Pat. Yeah. It was just one person we couldn't fix. And, and uh, it's what, yeah, that's worth mentioning that every almost even if you're kind of thinking that you, you, you know all this technology stuff sounds kind of uh, fast moving and uh, like a, an obstacle in reality we had an amazing success rate and we can walk you through how to install vassal we walk you through how to install the various components uh, the boot camp guys can absolutely oh, yeah. teach you the, all the the basics of how to you know get all of the gear and machinery running and uh, if we can do it for other people i'm sure we can do it for you guys as well yeah, I think we all received sort of personal thanks from various people who we yeah. who we brought up up the learning curve. Uh, one 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 person in particular, I remember. I mean, how to get on Discord, how to install Vassal, as you're saying, Edgar. And then post con, I think he and his buddy were on the on the Discord server for months on end. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> people kind of had their own uh, mini cons yeah, using yeah. our uh, uh, the setups. Yeah. Yeah. That which is great to see, which is absolutely fantastic yeah. to see. Yeah, that's that's another benefit of the of the con is there's a meeting place that doesn't end when the con is over. Right, the meeting place stays there because it doesn't cost anything. It's there on Discord. If somebody you met somebody during the convention, hey, let's get together in a month and replay this game. You can do it, and you have an okay. exact place to that you know works because it's there. It's still there. Yeah. Right, right. The, the only the only hurdle, right, that we have is we want to emulate physical con and create camaraderie with it. But, you know, it's still a digital platform, right? Mm -hmm. There's an inherent, you know, uh, impersonal feeling about sometimes using a digital technology. But, but I think that, we, and we had a lot of comments on that, instead of automating everything, automating greeting, et cetera, we had live human beings and channels, yeah. you yeah. know? Not just even chatting, you know, words have value and, and things that weren't automated and, and stuff we provided people just entering the lobby for the first time. Like, hi. Yeah. You know, in my mind, I kept using, um, I kept using Path as a model. I mean, I sort of had an imaginary narrative surrounding Path, but, but I know Pat had been with the con for ages. I knew that, that 
Harold was the organizer, but I had a feeling that Pat was one of those people that was omnipresent, right? Like you needed something done, you needed a table, you wanted some information, you went to Pat. So I, I sort of used, I wanted him as a model. And I just liked the idea, well, you know, uh, he served in every capacity. So I sort of, I, I like the idea that all of us, you know, wanted to be like that, right? We wanted to be everywhere and talking to people and engaged as if we were running around different tables. Is everything okay? How's it going? And for, I think that, yeah. that resonated with an enormous amount of people that attended. Yeah, and we're there the entire time the con is running. Somebody, if you have, you know, issues, if you have questions, yeah. there's going to be an actual human being in the tech support room uh, other than when we go to sleep. So that our official con hours, I, we, we officially do sleep at some point. But there, there's, you know, anytime the con is running and the talks are running, somebody is there and they can help you in real time. Yeah. Edgar, Edgar was in our days. everywhere at the con. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was. Yeah. It's kind of a joke, but it's also kind of, it goes to my phone, so yes. <laughs> yeah, God, it's just, it was a lot, it was a lot. It's another thing, it's just, a lot of us tend to be a little bit more of the face of the con, but I gotta say, just, you know, Edgar is a big foundation, <laughs> super foundational. Behind the scenes, the, the other we, face. You know, I don't want to say we take it for granted, but we cease mentioning it because we so greatly depend on him, you know, as, um, what I what I enjoy work, working with Edgar most of all is just absolutely cool under fire. Mm. Yeah, just uh, again, I'm just I'm happy to get, to get a chance to sort of uh, use some of my the skills that I've picked up at work in a in a positive way. So great, I'm very happy with this opportunity. We're uh, we're lucky to have you as a friend and a team member, Edgar. You know, um, I'll I'll close with that. The, you know, we've been doing, Pat, I guess, six or seven years. I don't know exactly. And, and, you know, with my memory, it's going to be 12 years tomorrow and 15 years after that. But we've been doing this convention and so much of it has weighed, you know, kind of weighed on our shoulders as, as to us just doing everything. Um, and, and by the way, Bobby, you said that people would come to Pat during the face-to-face -face con. People can also come to me during the face-to-face -face con. I'm just going to send them to Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice point. Nice point. So, so, uh, but, but, you know, this is, uh, this November and, and this con uh, are the first time that I've felt like the con's bigger than me and Pat, right? Mm -hmm. that, 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 that there's a group now that owns this and makes it happen. And that's the greatest feeling, right? I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I won't be around forever. I would love for this con to continue, you know, after either I lose interest in you all or I'm not around. <laughs> Um, and and I, that can't happen if it's just me and Pat, right? But if it's a, a group of really smart people that that have good ideas and and take this stuff so seriously, it's gonna it's gonna be around for a long time. So I'm pretty pumped about that. And and uh, so I'll just close with great appreciation of you guys and everybody else that we work with to put this con together. And um, with that. Uh, we are out of here to go do more work on the con and to share this podcast with uh, with the world. All right. See everybody there. Thank you. See everyone. Be there. Take care. The system is now. The recording's on. We'll, we'll, and you we'll can tell us. Post. You can tell us about the the games or the events that did not make it for the San Diego Hiscon in May twenty one. What events missed it that that you're excited about? Some of the you know highlights that man I was I was really gunning for even at the last con. A the Voice Wargamer Edition or Designer Karaoke Night. Dan Pancaldi hosting. You know, and there'll be a lot of eye rolls here, but imagine you pick from a small group of tracks previously agreed upon. Mark Herman doing my way, you know, Volko <laughs> Durling doing, you know, Ice Wide Zopa. Yeah, yeah. Volko doing some Snoop Dogg. I mean, <laughs> think about it. I can see Mike Herman doing Sinatra. That, that, that really can, does resonate with me. Yeah. And, and you know, <laughs> it, it would happen. And then, and then all the viewers would vote. That, that room would be packed instantly. Another one, Clash of the Titans, Celebrity Deathmatch, where two or more designers get together, not to play a war game, but a family game, like 
take it to ride. Take it to ride tournament. And hunger, especially hunger because online. I have a feeling <laughs> Mark Herman and Volko have probably never played Ticket to Ride. <laughs> you know. Um, and then tea time with Harold. I mean, why do we leave, you know, the UK out? A special yeah, coffee sure. that, but with tea and just UK designers. Yeah. Yeah, so, get me up so. get me up about midnight and I'll uh, I'll see. Yeah, I know that, that was the only problem. It was a hard sell. Down. So if there's any listeners out there that really, really think <laughs> war game or karaoke would be a thing, next time I'll make it happen personally for you. But it's a hard sell with know. these guys. Yeah, these guys were like uh, post it in comments. Big click eye roll here. Big eye roll. <laughs> post it in comments, click like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah.